Hello and welcome back to Mount Borealis Zoo, where we are in fact making money again. If anyone was as concerned as I was at the end of last episode about this not being a profitable zoo, it was all figured out. We're all good to go. Um, I played the game a little bit off camera here uh, just over the last maybe hour or so just to pay off the loan that I had taken to, you know, wrap up the building <laughs> and kind of make sure that we were in the clear. So we paid off the loan and pretty quickly have been making money since then. So that's been really great. Um, I will give a quick update on where our animals are at because it has been a bit of time. So, you know, things have changed a little bit. Um, yeah, expecting offspring. So these are all new reindeer. Uh, our kind of matriarch and patriarch reindeer that started this family, they have passed away. So I got, I think the females, I got a new male and the two females were um, babies from the previous uh, ones. So they, the three of them, I think will keep this going as uh, as sees fit. And as for beavers, I think, yeah. So I ended up getting some new beavers as well. So um, this guy here, he's our old one. He's elderly now. Um, his partner passed away, unfortunately. But um, Laval here is one of his cubs. Um, and I got him a new mate. Where is she? Oops, let's look on the actual habitat. Uh, yes, Amelia here um, is his new mate. So got her from the trade center. All good. She's got pretty decent genetics. Um, so I think they're gonna make some good gold star uh good star gold star beaver babies for us. <laughs> Which is gonna be great. So and what else have we gotten? I think we got some cub or some calves um here, yeah. So somebody here, I think it was Jenny, I can't remember. That could be wrong, but she had a litter of three little cuties. Let's take a look at what they are. Oh look at that puppy deer. Oh, these guys are so cute. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Hello. Oh, adorable. So cute. Absolutely fantastic. Um, but yeah, I should probably mark down who is who on here too, just because I know as soon as the others grow up, we're going to kind of forget. <laughs> I mean, I will forget anyway. I cannot, uh, I can never keep names straight when we get to having a whole bunch of animals. But yeah, I know... These animals were all added in very last minute at the very end of last episode, but I think this is what got us over over our hump of money issues. It was essentially two very simple habitats. They don't have like a big build associated with them or anything like that, but the guests do still really like them. Um, although, I mean, somebody didn't like this bin, but <laughs> they both seem to be pulling in a decent amount of guests. Um, the deer seems like more people are stopping by to see them, but I think that's because it's not, it's more in the way. It's not so out of the way. So, but that's okay. These guys are still awesome and I think they are so fun, especially when they start to go climbing up the mountain, uh, which I think is super fun. I don't know if they are pregnant yet. Oh yeah, she is. Okay, so she's expecting offspring. Um, and she's actually a little older too, so we might have to uh, rearrange some of that. But I actually don't know. I never really did check what they can do for like where they can go. Okay, yeah, so they can essentially climb all the way up to here, which makes sense, um, which is awesome. And maybe we'll catch them up on the on the cliff at some point, but <laughs> currently they seem to just be kind of chilling out. They obviously also have a much better habitat now with, you know, some actual enrichment and, and foliage and stuff since we made some money. Um, and over here, let's take a look at our penguins. So I know we have some baby penguins. And these guys are always way too cute. Look at how, like, ugh, look how tiny his head is compared to his body. <laughs> they look so fat, but they're also very small. Oh, I love them. They look so much different than the uh, African penguin, African penguin babies. The African penguins, the only ones that I, the ones that I've played with. Or no, I guess we had the king penguin um, in back in Naropa City Zoo in our cold in our cold building, but that was kind of like right at the end. Um, but they actually are quite big compared to the adults. I would have expected them to be smaller, but it is what it is. And I think our seals, I did move their bedding platform back a little bit just to see if that would help with their stress levels. And it actually kind of seems like it has been helping out a little bit. I haven't been noticing so many um, like notifications of them getting stressed out. so. 
hopefully that helps a little bit, but we are going to have to up everybody's enrichment, I think, um, here pretty soon. But yeah, that is where our zoo is currently at. I still haven't really gone through and done all the detailing yet in these areas. I would love to put in more of this like distressed um, decals and stuff, even, you know, along the water here and all of that. I did fix some of our viewpoints. Like I added this in for guests to come and look at the seals because they were complaining that they couldn't see them well enough. <laughs> so that is there. And this one, I think I am going to get rid of eventually and turn that into a restaurant um, patio, which does not need pads, I now know. Um, but that'll be a little bit later, I think. More urgently, just so that we can make sure that we're having a really good income inflow, is going to be to put another habitat in. And the next one that makes sense to do, um, I think, because it is the next one that's closest to where we're at right now, is going to be a Japanese macaw hot springs. So I'm kind of imagining this little area here, like at the base of the mountain, to be sort of like ski resort-esque, which I'm not going to do too much for, um, but at least a little bit. I was thinking we could have a really cool ski lift building, um, even though I don't think we're quite financially... Like, <laughs> we're not making quite enough money yet to make the gondola to actually get up here. But I think we could start working on at least kind of the building area. And I thought it would be really cool to have um, a, like a hot spring building and lake sort of thing for the Japanese macaw, which um, the guests can enter their habitats. Um, I did look that up. So I think that'll be super cool. They can like, I mean, obviously they won't swim with them because <laughs> they don't do that, but we can kind of make it look like, you know, the guests are actually entering in the hot springs and um, the the macaws are there as well. I think I, I could be saying that wrong um, as well. I should probably look that up, <laughs> but yeah, that is the next plan. I think I'll probably, I could probably work on both buildings um, this episode and kind of at least put I don't know, I'm just hesitant on making the gondola building without the gondola in place. So we'll see how the money flow is going here. This is definitely enough, I think, to make the hot springs, um, but I don't know if it'll be enough to make both. So I might just wait, leave a little bit of space here for the gondola and then make a nice big thing here for the hot springs. And then our zoo is gonna continue off in this direction a bit. Um, I've got some other kind of cool ideas for, you know, down in this area. So it'll be sort of like a, an intermediate step before we get into some more themed areas here uh, and I think that'll be really good and it can take up I mean I don't think there's any problem with it taking up most of this area I mean there's no point in having dead space <laughs> um, in this zoo so I'm kind of imagining you know the path's gonna go straight off this way and then we have this entire space over here for um, the next couple of buildings so I think that's gonna be really fun I don't really know what theme I'm going to go for quite yet for the hot springs. I'm kind of thinking I might do something like a Japanese onsen just because, you know, they're the Japanese macaw <laughs> probably fit, but I do still need to actually do a little bit of research on that before we dive in. But I think that's going to be super fun. And that is the next plan. I don't think, oh, who is starving and why? Yeah, we also maybe with, uh, you know, now that we're making a bit more money, I might actually need to hire another keeper. <laughs> because our animals are clearly uh, not being taken care of as we would have expected. So let's see how our staff are doing. Um, no, this is, our, everybody seems to have efficient workloads. I'm gonna upgrade everybody again. And then, I don't know, maybe they just, I don't know. This I don't know how accurate this is actually either. Um, whether or not the efficient versus high actually is all that accurate because <laughs> it seems like sometimes they have like efficient or low workloads but then stuff's not getting done so it's hard to say but i do think adding in another habitat over here we might need to look at getting another keeper um as well but anyway i think that is pretty much all of the updates for this our zoom so far. Uh, I think all of that kind of detail work. I'll do off camera at some point, but I really just want to keep the building going and make sure that we're making enough money and we need more animals to do that and everything. So we need to get our, uh, our guest count is pretty good, but we'll get it up there. And yeah, without any further ado, I guess, let's just jump right into the speed build. All right, and here we go. So we are starting with the first kind of the main building for our Japanese macaque habitat. I did look up how to say that. I think I was definitely saying it wrong before. I don't even remember what I was saying before, <laughs> but I was probably saying it wrong. So <laughs> that is what it is. Um, but yeah, so this is our main kind of central building that's gonna go into this habitat. 
So I wanted to go for, essentially my inspiration was kind of the Japanese, Japanese onsen sort of style, I guess. I think it worked out quite well. I tried to, you know, look for some and get some real photos and, and all of that for inspiration. And I, I think it worked out. Obviously we have some kind of limited pieces and I didn't want to do too much like total customization. Uh, I wanted to stick as well as possible as much as I could with, you know, the pieces that we had available and all of that. But I think it turned out really well. And this first little bit is going to be a little bit rough while I'm kind of experimenting with the pieces and all of that. But once I kind of get the flow of it, this worked out so well. <laughs> I'm so happy with how this looks and yeah, it just, oh, uh, I, I kept, I decided, so you'll see actually in the background there, um, little aside, there are some new buildings back there because essentially what I did was the very first thing that I did was I made the gondola and um, a train. So we're gonna have a train going through this area as well. It's not useful yet, like where well, there's no station here because this is the very start of the train, but I wanted to get the starting done so I knew kind of the layout, like where it would go um, versus where this and this habitat would go. And originally I had thought I would do a sort of, you know, some kind of like tradi more traditional style, like ski lodge, cabin, wooden sort of, vibe going on with the like gondola station and the train station uh so that's kind of so i did build something there but i didn't like it and after i built this i couldn't even like there was no comparison between the two this looks in infinitely better than what i had built over there so i just cut that out because i'm going to delete it and rebuild it um later on in this video in this speed build so don't worry about all of that in the background there <laughs> That is just kind of what that is, and the, this whole situation totally inspired me for this entire section. I wasn't really sure, I kind of had an idea of doing kind of a Nordic theme, since we have all those cool like Nordic pieces, I could do like a little Viking um, town over here was what I orig was originally thinking. I still think that's a cool idea for this area, but I might move that idea up to on the mountain, uh, do a little a fun little one in, in the mountain area once we get up there. And instead, here, I am definitely doing a full, like, Japan theme um, <laughs> in, in this area. It's so, I don't know, it's beautiful. Like, the architecture, the way that these worked out um, with the pieces that we do have, even though, I mean, I guess a lot of these pieces are from the East Asia theme. Um, it, it works really well in here, and I, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm not over it yet. I think it You'll see, well, you've seen the screenshots and stuff, but it works out really well. I love how this ends up turning out. So I wanted to keep that theme going. And so the second half of this video is basically going to be me building a few other little buildings and the train station and the gondola station and all of that to kind of mix in with this theme a little bit better. But obviously we're starting with this main building and this building in general actually for this area for a lot of this area i ended up taking a lot of inspiration from the sims 4 actually so i don't know if any of you play the sims 4. um i've been really into the sims for a really long time uh and I, I don't play it much anymore. I think I'm kind of, at this point, it's been out for such a long time, I'm almost waiting for The Sims 5, <laughs> and then maybe I'll get back into it. But fairly recently, they had an update, or a, like a DLC that has a, a Japanese, like a Japanese city, whatever they're called in The Sims, um, like neighborhood. And yeah, there was a, there's a ski lodge and, and everything up there and focuses a lot on these um, onsens and this kind of theme. So I actually used quite a bit of inspiration from that and from Pinterest people uh, posting their builds on The Sims 4. <laughs> so that's basically directly what this came from in particular. And yeah, I just think it, it worked out really well in this game. I was kind of surprised, but I really like how it looks. And it almost like, it kind of vibes quite well, I think with our previous themes as well with the with all the cross beaming and um all of that it's definitely a different style like it is a very unique style here but it's it's similar to what we've done previously so i think it just works out really well in this zoo it doesn't look too like starkly different in my opinion but yeah this is what that kind of finished building looks like originally i was thinking we'd just have people go through the building like normal and maybe it would be 
um, like I just put some shops in there. I eventually ended up turning it into a restaurant. Uh, and well, I don't really show turning it into a restaurant here because I wasn't like, I had to do some indoor building and stuff. And I, I never like filming indoor building because <laughs> it's always such a camera mess. So yeah, I'll, uh, we'll definitely tour that a little bit afterwards and see, you know, what that looks like. But I did finally figure out how to make restaurants. I ended up making two restaurants <laughs> in this area, which is maybe excessive, but I think there's really cool. Uh, the idea of having people like sitting out on the patios and stuff, I think is, is pretty neat. So <laughs> I decided to just go right for it and start playing around with, with the restaurant building and it worked out quite well. So we'll, uh, we'll get a full tour of what that looks like obviously uh, in the real time part after all of this, but this uh, little offshoot here, essentially they'll be able to walk up to the, um, up on the deck on the main building, kind of walk around it and walk over to this little viewing area here. And it's just gonna have uh, like the habitat or the info boards. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> it's just gonna have some info boards and speakers and stuff. It's just a little area for the guests to like hang out and watch the animals and, all of that. I don't know how much they're actually going to use it since they can kind of also see the animals from, you know, the main building and the main pathways, but it's here anyway. And I think it looks quite good attached uh, to the main building. So I'm not too worried about, um, about that not being quite perfect, but I think it's really cute. Basically just, yeah, copy and pasted a lot of the same style over here. Uh, but I like how the kind of supports and the viewing ended up looking on this, uh, on this building. It worked out quite well. <laughs> and there's me uh, remembering to actually do some of the corners. I don't think I remember to do all the corners in all these buildings. <laughs> For some reason, corners are just, I don't know, they always go go past me. I, I was just thinking, uh, I, I want to talk about these log pieces a little bit because in a lot of the designs that I was seeing, there were some very specific wooden, uh, wooden wall styles that I, I'm sure I could recreate with just using a whole bunch of those wood beams and you know stacking them and all of that to, to kind of make it match uh, the style that you actually see <laughs> on these sorts of buildings a little bit better than the log walls do. But I figured for simplicity and for trying not to go overboard with pieces because I already go overboard with pieces, uh, I would just use them. And I actually, I like how it looks. I mean, it's not as obviously not as authentic um, as, the as it would be if we had pieces more stylized like wall pieces more stylized for it but i think it kind of looks not too bad you can let me know what you think but um yeah that's kind of that's what i ended up using i ended up using a lot of those log wall pieces and i think it just kind of looks quite rustic and fits the snowy theme quite nicely <laughs> but here uh you can see on the right hand side there a building appeared that's just a duplicate of basically just a duplicate of the other building with walls added in uh that's gonna be our staff area so I, I end up moving that a little bit later on just to get it out of the habitat and make the staff area kind of make a little bit more sense but that is the intention there for that other building <laughs> and then the next step here is building a wall around um, all the way around this habitat essentially because it is it is going to be the habitat so the everywhere in there is where the macaques are going to be able to hang out I end up putting in paths that have barriers because I just thought maybe it's better to just keep them off of the, uh, like out of the restaurant and stuff. It makes a little bit more sense. They can't actually interact directly with the guests, even though realistically they would be able to. They would be able to climb over those fences very easily <laughs> and interact with the guests. So it's kind of the idea. I mean, it, guests can interact with them anyway in this game. So I figured, you know, it is a walkthrough habitat, even if they can't actually get onto the paths <laughs> it kind of you know it's just it works out but yeah here i'm <laughs> struggling with pathing it actually didn't end up being too bad getting the paths to line up properly with uh, this whole building so it's all good and this is going to be a straight through so i kind of i was at first thinking that maybe this would be an optional obviously like you can choose to go into here and see the animals and then leave maybe but just with the space and how limited we are in space in this area due to the mountains <laughs> being everywhere i just figured you know what our guests are all going to want to go through here anyway and once we get the train in place they can skip this whole section so essentially if you're a guest walking through the zoo, you have to go through this habitat. <laughs> I mean, you can walk right through the habitat and out the other end, but you're gonna have to go through the habitat uh, is how this ended up working out. Unless you, you know, take the train, go around the habitat, that's also fine, uh, or the gondola or whatever. But 
walking, this is totally blocking the path, <laughs> which I, I don't know. I think it works out fine. I, I, it doesn't really bother me. Hopefully it doesn't bother you. <laughs> um, anybody else in terms of zoo planning? I kind of, I don't know. I, I try my best to make the zoos make sense in terms of how people can walk around and navigate and stuff. But when you have so many ideas and you want to make it kind of a cool, you know, a cool layout and, a, and have a nice, you know, have the mountains and stuff, like with this crazy map that we have going on here. Um, it's it's a little bit tricky to make it perfect where guests can kind of choose where they want to go and everything. So doing my best, but yeah, this one, they, they're going to have to go through this habitat <laughs> to get to the rest of the zoo if they want to be walking. Uh, so yeah, I just kind of cut there. I didn't make you watch me put all the rocks down, but essentially I lined the entire river or pond, lake sort of situation here <laughs> with rocks just to make it look a little bit more. Um, authentic, make it look a little bit better. I think it looks way better with the rocks. And then I add in these bridges because the macaques can't swim. Um, so they need the bridges to be able to access their entire habitat. But once they were in, it worked out really well. They're able to go across the bridges. They can go basically on all land areas and they got a whole bunch of shelter underneath the building. They can go and hang out under there if they want to get away from the guests or just get away from the snow or whatever it might be. And then the rest of this is just creating a beautiful garden. <laughs> I added in uh, some cherry blossom trees. Not quite yet, but I will. Um, I wasn't sure at first if I wanted to stick with the um, taiga plants or not, but I, I quickly ended up you know, just thinking, you know what, let's just add some more beautiful color and <laughs> some of the nice plants in here as well. I mean, I'm sure they could manage to survive the winter. It's probably not that big of a deal. <laughs> How realistic do you really need to be in Planet Zoo anyway? Uh, I'm sure we have people, you know, keeping, uh, you know, keeping, keeping these plants alive. <laughs> per se. So I kind of wanted to do a little bit of a mix of, you know, random plants and over by the mountain and stuff, there's going to be more uh, plants that you would probably na more naturally see in this environment. And then over here, we've got some more, um, you know, garden style bushes and things that are a little bit more obviously maintained <laughs> by the staff. And uh, all of that, I think the kind of mix turns out really good. I think it looks great in the snow. Um, it looks good when the snow melts. So that just really works out well. And that little pop of color um, really, really makes this area, in my opinion, uh, turn out really good. I didn't really play around with the terrain at all in here in terms of the, uh, the grass levels and all of that, just because it's covered in snow and the macaques actually don't mind it covered in snow. So I might have to go back and kind of make some edits there once uh, once the snow melts in case they don't like how much long grass and everything is in here But for now we just kind of we leave it. But yeah, that's where I decided that I'm not gonna do the the uh, Restaurant on camera, but I'll show you that when we get to the real-time part And then next here we are redoing the train station. So train station is here right beside um, right beside the entrance essentially to the onsen and it i mean that's why there's no station for the onsen <laughs> essentially they'll get it here and then they'll move from this area to other areas of the zoo if they want to um, but for now it's just the main station i didn't actually add the rest of the train yet uh, i think it kind of it kind of i don't know it sort of is a little bit counterintuitive in my opinion especially in franchise mode um to like have this train have paid money for the train but we can't make money off of the train yet. <laughs> it's just kind of sitting here because it doesn't go anywhere. But at this point, our zoo is actually making money fairly fast. So I'm not too worried about the financial part of it. I think we can, we're not going to be losing money keeping the train closed. So I think we should be okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm always a little bit concerned that we're suddenly going to be not making money anymore, but for the most part, I think we're stable. <laughs> so I'm not too worried about the train and the gondola not running yet um, and being there. So it's basically just taking up space at this point, but <laughs> not a big deal. So the first building that we're doing here, obviously, yeah, train station. So I I don't know, I might go back a little bit later and make some edits to this one. I like, I really loved how the onsen looked and then I made this one and it looks a little bit more plain, but in some aspects, I'm in a train station I, I mean, I don't think a train station needs to look like anything super special, right? Like, <laughs> it's just a train station. Um, so maybe it's okay that it's a little bit more plain. And uh, the other thing that we're going to have to do, I'm going to do, I think, next episode when we 
wrap up this whole um, Japan area and like there's gonna be a little bit more on the other side of the onsen um, a little bit more of the Japanese style buildings and a couple more habitats um, so I'm gonna do all of that next episode and once we get there I want to add a whole bunch of plants to this area too there wasn't enough time to do it for this episode but the uh, this area definitely needs gardens <laughs> I, I didn't really do much for gardens in the Europe area because it's, it's much more city like and it's, there's not really any space, it's like all concrete, but over here there's all this grass area. So I do want to turn all of that into more of a like foresty, gardeny sort of situation, fill it in with plants, <laughs> but I didn't end up getting to that this episode. So it will happen, but not quite yet. Um, so this next building that I'm making uh, is the other one that I end up turning into a restaurant. So this isn't where it's gonna go. I, I just kind of built it here and then rearranged um, everything as needed afterwards. But I really like how this building um, turned out as well. I think it's a, it's a lot, it's, it is it is that fancier style that you see in the onsen. The buildings that we're gonna build after this kind of cut, uh, dial that back quite a bit. <laughs> but this is definitely a fancier one. So I thought this would be a good one to be a restaurant. Like it's kind of like a, you know, fancy restaurant where you get to sit out on these decks um, and eat your restaurant food <laughs> and have your dinner sort of thing. So yeah, I kind of sense of being like a square building with the decks all the way around. And I think, I don't know, those doors, I think it's those doors that like really sell it for me. <laughs> uh, I just absolutely love them and I, I don't use them anymore because I've already used them a lot. <laughs> I wanted to, you know, I didn't want it to be too repeated everywhere, but it, uh, those doors are just so beautiful. I am, I'm still not over it, <laughs> how those look. But yeah, this is just a, a tower. I kind of, I don't know, it is interesting when you build these buildings because obviously there's no space on the inside for like stairs to get up to those other levels. So very unrealistic, but they look really good from the outside. So I think, you know, in my opinion, that's good enough. <laughs> At least for, you know, a zoo. They're meant to just be for show anyway, right? So this one here is um, a little kind of corner store build. Again, I got this inspiration from a Sims 4 build <laughs> for this one as well. Um, and it's kind of just meant to be a sort of, yeah, basically like a corner shop. Um, so we're dialing down the styling here quite a bit. Um, this one is a little bit more plain, but it still obviously fits into this, um, this whole theme, I think quite well. So I don't know. I think that kind of works out. <laughs> and this one ends up being, I think it's around this area is where I end up putting it. But again, um, I'm going to rearrange, um, I rearrange things a little bit um, afterwards. But yeah, pretty straightforward on this one. I was playing around. These are actually, the, these are Europe pieces on these cloths. I saw a lot of uh, these kind of canopies that are a little bit more plain. And we don't really have any good plain canopies <laughs> in this game. They're all either... Uh, they're like striped or they're scalloped or whatever it might be. I end up using some of those ones um, in the next building, but for this one, I thought this kind of plain one might fit just a little bit better. Um, and then I saw, you know, some of these kind of cute shutters on windows and just decided to um, recreate them a little bit with these log pieces. It doesn't quite look like I wanted it to, but um, I think it, you know, we did our best. <laughs> <laughs> with the pieces that we have available and I think it still looks like a cool little building uh, especially for this kind of for the more transitional area uh, into where things get a little bit fancier I think it works out quite well um, in all of these buildings as well I'll show you them again in the real-time part but I didn't do the interior of these buildings I I don't know I mean maybe I won't worry about it too much in this franchise zoo and then um, if I do like a, a uh, sandbox <laughs> zoo sometime soon. Maybe I'll focus a little bit more on doing like interiors and stuff, but I don't know. It just kind of, I mean, I put the shops in, you could put, I guess, like shelves and stuff, but there's not a lot of pieces in this game. It seems like that are made to for interiors. I thought maybe they would release more when they released the, uh, the, um, not the restaurants, but the stands, like where you can make your your own custom uh, stands with the shop counters. Shop counters, that's what they're called. I thought that maybe they would also release some pieces that you could build interiors out of, like build the interior of a shop. <laughs> but really there doesn't seem to be anything. Like there's no, I don't know, it seems like you have to kind of make your own custom shelving and um, 
and all of that inside the building anyway. So I don't know, I, yeah, it just seems like a lot of work <laughs> to pick the insides. And the insides are very small, so other than putting maybe some shelves on the walls and stuff, but again, we don't, it doesn't really feel like we have any proper shelves to put on the walls. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm just being lazy, I guess, at this point, but <laughs> maybe eventually we'll go back and do some interior stuff. But for now, these are all very plain interiors. It's all just kind of meant to be, uh, meant to be looked at from the outside. And then the guests can go in and they do shop and uh, there's plenty of space for the guests <laughs> inside, I guess, because we didn't clutter it up with, with shelving and stuff so they can, you know, walk around as they please and stand in line, I guess, <laughs> inside of these buildings. It just, yeah, it just looks kind of, it just doesn't look great when you look into the building, I guess, is, uh, is my only real issue with it, but I don't know. That's just my bad. I, I could put the effort in, but I have not yet. <laughs> so let me know if you have any tips for interior, building the interiors of these buildings. I just, I've never really done it, so I don't know exactly how I would do that, but um, I might play around with it a little bit. Obviously, I said last time that I didn't know how restaurants worked, and this time I figured out how restaurants work and I built two, so <laughs> next time, I mean, again, I didn't do restaurant interiors, but <laughs> uh, I guess, yeah, I guess that's all the same problem, how to do restaurant interior. I think they had a few, I know they have like the booths and stuff, but yeah, I don't know. I guess I just have to maybe play around with it a little bit more. But here is the last building before we go back to the gondola. <laughs> we will go back and do the gondola building as well quickly, but this is the another, basically another corner shop sort of situation, um, convenience store um, sort of thing. So this one is a lot more simple. Um, and again, I just kind of wanted it to be sort of transitional. I tried to, I was thinking about those shades, you know, those like, I don't know exactly what they're called. That's probably my bad, but um, there's these very traditional like shades uh, that are used I think a lot of times for like sliding doors and stuff in uh, like that, this kind of traditional Japanese style uh, builds and we don't have anything like that in this game and I didn't really want to, I don't know, I wasn't really trying to create my own. I would have had to use very small pieces to make them fit into this area so that's kind of where, what I'm using the windows for in this situation is they're sort of meant to be more like doors. Um, that you would like slide open than windows, but I don't really know if that illusion comes across, I guess. Uh, especially in this one, I kind of, I wasn't really sure, but I mean, I figured it's just meant to be a very simple little build, so it's not a big deal. Um, anyway, but that one ends up being, I put a couple of food, I think a food and drink stall in that small one, and then the big one I end up making into a gift shop. <laughs> so it's got all the gift options in there. And yeah, last but not least, we have our gondola station. So first little bit here, I was playing around with trying to use these like new world windows and all that I don't think like it doesn't end up looking good I end up replacing everything with just the glass pieces <laughs> so you can see right into it see how long the lineups are and all of that uh, I kind of I was thinking like the idea is you do want the inside to be closed like you don't want I didn't want it to just be you know a, a cover for this area because the guests are going to be kind of cold so when they're waiting in line for the gondola you know it makes more sense for them to wait inside a building and I was kind of I was thinking about sticking with um the kind of style that I was doing before, but then I was looking at like ski lifts and stuff and there really isn't like all the buildings, even the ones I toured a few um, like ski resorts on Google uh, Street View <laughs> in Japan. And they all kind of have this same style. Like they're all metal buildings, um, which I think just makes a lot of sense for like a ski hill, <laughs> right? Like you're not gonna build, I mean, I know some some like ski hill buildings are built out of wood and stuff, but it seems like for these gondolas, a lot of it is built out of like metal and um, looks more like that. So yeah, uh, that is pretty much it for this one. I ran out of money, had to uh, do a little bit of, uh, had to run the game a little bit to get the money back and then I just finished up the building. So let's take a look at what that looks like now. Okay, so here we are entering in from our Central Park area here with the reindeer and the and the uh, beavers. And I really need to, I, I'm gonna change that building. <laughs> I'm gonna make them something that makes a little bit more sense. It's more like a stable. Um, I don't love how that one looks there. That was just kind of a temporary option. Um, a little bit of an eyesore, but you walk this way, obviously doesn't look great yet. Kind of imagine this whole area is gonna be covered in, you know, garden and trees and, bushes and all of that, probably something a little bit curated, like uh, manicured 
garden sort of situation, but yeah, a little bit more filled in. <laughs> right now it doesn't look awesome, but this is what the gondola building ended up looking like. It uh, looks quite a bit different than I did in the speed build. I just kind of, but it was very simple to build um, anyway, but that's just kind of, you know, looks very plain on the inside. I don't know, I might add some stuff in here, but really when it comes to like standing in line for a gondola, I'm not really sure what you want to be looking at. There's not really much to look at. <laughs> but as you come along this direction, we've got our first store here, which is the gift shop. We've just got, I mean, yeah, very plain inside. I think I'll at least add some like stuff to the walls and the, and like signs up here and stuff to, you know, tell guests what they're buying <laughs> and all of that. But this is what it looks like from the outside. I added a bunch of vending machines in this area because I thought, you know, it fits very well with the, um, the Japan theme and everything like that. So that works out quite well. And as you walk this way, this will be another garden area after next episode. We'll do that next episode. And then over here is the other shop. This one has a pip shot. Um, I think this is juice and chief beef over here, but that's what it looks like from down here. I think it's a cute little cute little building. I don't know. I think it fits. <laughs> it works quite well. And again, I just added a couple of vending machines uh, to this area as well, uh, just to fill out the outside a little bit. Uh, so there is the train station. I, I'm kind of a, you know, this looks a little bit plain down here, but I think I'm going to cover this with um, plants, like with some bushes and stuff anyway. So we'll worry about that a little bit later on as well. But in here, oh, I need to maybe add an entrance and exit sign here as well. Um, but this is the entrance. And then obviously uh, I need to do the inside of this building as well. <laughs> building interiors, the thing that never gets done in our franchise mode zoos. And then here is the restaurant, which I clearly still need to hook up to the path. <laughs> Um, I will do that in a minute, but this is what it ended up looking like. So people can sit um, on all the corners and that's all the way up. People can sit up here as well. I added these heaters, uh, which I just think works really well for the patios. Um, if you go this way, there's actually a bathroom because there's not a lot of bathrooms in this area. So I figured that would be good to just have a little bathroom entrance there. And then going straight through this front door is where you get through the restaurant. So. That's what that looks like. Um, I did edit the wall a little bit as well to hide the staff path a little bit better. So let's actually go through the staff area first. So just kind of walk through here. There's a very boring, uh, <laughs> very boring pathway all the way back here. I need to maybe add another uh, staff room somewhere as well, because right now everybody from that first area needs to come back here, uh, which isn't great. But there's a staff room here and there's actually a keeper hut hidden in here as well. Um, I mean, whatever. I don't worry too much about the staff buildings. Um, but the staff can, you know, from the restaurant, they can come up here. And obviously the keepers can come up here, but there's also the habitat gate over there um, for them as well. I don't know exactly if they always will come all the way back here with the food or if they will just enter in through that way. Um, it is kind of weird because you have to have the habitat gate, even if like a, even if a keeper hut is inside the habitat. But I don't know. Um, Maybe I should watch that a little bit. It might be kind of far for them to walk all the way over here from there. Uh, I could always add in an extra like little building here or something for some guest facility. I don't know. We'll have to see how that goes. But either way, let's enter into this habitat because I think this is definitely the star of the show today. So as you walk in here, you go immediately over this bridge and you can see what's going on in the water. It looks like somebody threw their melon or ball or something into the water. Lovely. <laughs> Cannot get it. Um, and yeah, there's their little feeding area and water area. I don't know. Where are they? Oh, there's one. He's crossing the bridge. Very fun. Um, we've got their little statues and there's actually a little piano right there for them to play as well. I'm going to try to get a clip of somebody playing the piano there for the intro. So you've probably already seen that. <laughs> but we've got a little feeder over there as well. The forage feeder. Um, there's another one running across to get some water. Very cute. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> They're all running back over to this area. And yeah, this is what it looks like from down here. So I love the trees. I think they look so cute. Um, very beautiful. So the restaurant, this is where the restaurant seating is. Just the two tables for this one. Um, I also hid some tables in here just for them to, um, just to be able to feed more people, but it's not very exciting in there <laughs> as well. But the path goes this way so people can stand anywhere along here and look at them. It looks like people are really liking this view today. I don't know exactly what they're looking at. Um, I don't see any macaques from here, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, this is a lineup to get into the restaurant, I guess. I don't know why they're standing out here, uh, but whatever, that works. And obviously they can come over here, but nobody wants to be over here because there's probably no macaques over here. <laughs> 
I guess I should have put the viewing area maybe on the other side since their food and stuff is on the other side, but whatever, it works out. <laughs> I don't think it's too big of a deal if the guests don't want to use the entire space. Um, but this is all walkway and then down that way. It's obviously walkway, but nobody's going down that way because there's nothing down there. Uh, this is a staff path. So this is the path where the staff can use to get to the staff room and to the keeper hut and all of that. But yeah, that is basically the habitat. Let's take a look from up here as well. And this is what this area looks like. So I, I don't think I'm going to do any more buildings in this area. I just kind of want to fill this in with some garden and then we'll do some more buildings over in this area here. I might even, I don't know, I might even think about maybe moving this restaurant once we do this area, moving the restaurant over to this area next episode um, and then doing like a, just a staff building um, over here. I think that might fit a little bit better just because... I don't know, I have a feeling that this is maybe too far for the staff to walk for the keeper hut, so I might have to put the keeper hut over here anyway. I don't know, I'm gonna watch them a little bit. I think it would be nice if they could just go from here <laughs> into here, but I don't think they can, because like the there's not really a pathway for the staff to get in here. They have to basically go all the way through here. So I might keep an eye on it, see if they're having a hard time walking all the way from here to here. It might not be a big deal, but either way, we do need a, uh, a staff room for the staff that are in here so that they don't have to walk all the way over there and I do want to hide these uh, the power sources a little bit better <laughs> than they currently are. I know the wind ones can't really be properly hidden but I do find them a little bit of an eyesore so I'm kind of wondering if putting like a single transformer here will cover everything that these two are covering um, and then we can just hide the transformer in a building. I'm not really sure yet. Um, but that's all going to be next episode anyway. But as always, let me know what you think of uh, we've done this episode in the comment section below. Let me know if you have any ideas. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think. I know this is kind of a, I never really talked about doing an area like this before, but like I said in the time lapse, building this building it just totally gave me a wealth of inspiration and i really want to i want to wrap this one up so um i'm gonna do a little bit more so it's, this area this theme is gonna extend a little bit more onto the other side probably similar to how much it's it's expanded out this way um so it'll just be kind of that repeated over here um in the form of what you can look for next look forward to next episode i'm thinking the arctic fox and the red panda so i'm just gonna i mean there's gonna be less for buildings over in that area i think i'm gonna focus more on just building those two habitats um and kind of maybe some cute buildings in those habitats and obviously the staff buildings and probably something for the guests to eat or go to the bathroom over there <laughs> as well uh but yeah for the most part it's going to be focused more next episode on the habitats again um i saw a bunch of your comments saying you'd like me to focus more on the habitats and i would like to do that too so this this uh, japanese macaque habitat was the first one that's really habitat focused um so they have a beautiful habitat i want to repeat that um, as we're going forward making sure animals have very beautiful habitats and then i think eventually we will go back and redo some of the europe habitats um, just to make them a little bit nicer as well. I just, right now, I'm lack, lacking a little bit of inspiration for that area. So while the inspiration is high, we'll finish up this area <laughs> and give our next animals some really cute habitats. So I'm looking forward to that. And I hope you are as well. And I will talk to you in the next one.